Well to San Juan stage five. This is after the crosswind chaos. I'm going to try find some footage of that. Remco's off the bat by a fair whack. Brendan McNulty is bridging across with Guillaume Martin. We've got another random Conti lad who's also trying to get across. Brendan McNulty is in the green jersey. I believe that is the points jersey or potentially the young riders classification. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, he's doing well, GC. Here's Guillaume Martin, the young French hopeful who's about 29 now. Um, but apparently he's still going to win the tour, according to every single person in France and the cycling media. Um, but, you know, if he, obviously if he was... Um, if he was from Colombia, you know where Gary is, but because he's French, he's a, a huge name. Uh, but yeah, he's bridging across uh, to Brendan McNulty. Remco's far back. This climb is weird. It's like 4%. It's not hard. They average like 27 kilometers an hour up it. Like, there's really, like, the numbers involved on today's stage are really not mind-boggling because it's just so easy to sit in. Like, um, when the man we're going to talk about, who is uh, Miguel Flores, um, when he wins the stage, we'll talk about numbers then, but suffice to say at 57 kilos they weren't really that impressive um obviously it's a high altitude but he's a high altitude native so even so but anyway here he is miguel miguel flores is coming across and i think he's going to be an absolute monster i mean we know all know jan is sabio when he signs a bloke from colombia or ecuador or any sort of south american country there's always one thing that's going to happen he's going to go race san juan he's going to go race a couple races in the italy and everyone's going to be like wow this bloke is unreal and um, it happened with Bernal, happened with Sosa, and, uh, you know, obviously had Fausto Masnada as last year as well, and Vendrame went to Edge de Zola Mundial. I mean, he's got hundreds of people in the world tour. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, there's big old Rafa Micro, believe on him back there, just cruising, cruising along. Uh, yeah, Remco's on the front driving it, because he's in the leader's jersey at the moment. He did a ridiculous TT. I made a video about that on his TT position, one of the best positions on a road bike. That I've ever seen, probably more aerodynamic than most people on a TT bike. Um, obviously, he's tiny as well, so CDA is not going to be large in the first place. But you can see here, he's a pretty comfortable bloke. His stats for today were like 240 normalized for four hours, I think it was 57 kilos, so like four and a half watts per kilo. Nothing mad at all, pretty, pretty calm. Obviously, there was altitude involved, but he's a fuel climber. So we skip, skip ahead. Remco's um, on the front here they're all together but people start dancing people going out the saddle and people are realizing that it's time to have some fun and uh, unfortunately uh the coverage of this race is very useless um but it is what it is um Ganna's here and that sort of tells you that the climb's not steep it's literally four percent the whole time remco decides well let's let's have a go let's have a go but remco is um slightly in the bin at this moment um as you know he had to chase for a long time uh, and, you know, he's got Brendan McNulty on his fourth wheels, Flores, and uh, Oscar Sevilla, I believe, is third wheel. Um, Oscar Sevilla is like four years old. Reminds everyone of a bit of Alejandro Valverde. He served a doping plan for Upper Washington, Puerto, and now is dominating races. Apparently got banned from racing in Europe, so he sacked off to South America. Fell in love with a uh, podium girl from Colombia and uh, decided that, you know what, this is the life. I think, you know, it must be pretty fun just racing around these parts, actually smashing them all despite you being 40, uh, but you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, and so I think the thing you've got to realize though, that these pure climbers, like this is their territory in, you know, high altitude, obviously it's not super steep, but let's say this is like a 10% climb, then Miguel Flores would be off the charts in a different league um, compared to everyone else. These people are trying to get across, but I think, I think you knew at the beating of everyone, like looking at his power file, he seemed very relaxed. Like it didn't seem there were, any big surges he just seemed to ride within the wheels um i don't believe there was heart rate on it and even if there is heart rate people have many, many different maximum heart rates often pro riders tend to have lower maximum heart rates um because they're just very well trained and also often when you're tired you don't get as good but look at the commitment to the aero gains by people gana he's he's loving life <laughs> he's loving life in the aero gains uh, and 1.7 kilometers ago still just a bit of soft tapping bit of soft tapping but there's going to be three really hard accelerations towards the end, which both peak over 800 watts, which obviously 57 kilos is, is pretty good. And, you know, it was a hardish stage. I don't think it was like the hardest part was probably the crosswind section. And then, you know, this bit here, you can tell that, you know, it, you, you love that kid on a bike. He's going to keep up. It's not it's not really too rapid. But Guillaume Martin's that Oscar Severe, sorry, he is in the orange jersey, as you can see. He is doing, had a lightweight disc wheel on, which I thought was very, very nice. He was running some, I believe they're probably Bernal's overshoes because they're Team Sky in them, which is, again, is very rogue. But um, seems like a kind of bloke who just does what he wants when it comes to racing, and he's sort of bigger than the Conti team that he rides for. Um, 
Miguel Flores is still just biding time. This is the issue when it's such a sh like shallow climb. If you go early, you're just going to get caught. And Remco lines up again. And obviously, everyone knows exactly who Remco is. Last year, he might have got away with it. Everyone thought, oh, arrogant junior, he's not that good. Now, everyone's like, nah, if Remco goes, we're all going. So Remco puts in like a pretty big dig. But look who's on the back of his wheel straight away. A man, Flores, and he's he's on the wheel. And he, 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 I mean, he could have counted here, maybe. But I think he's just realized that you know, if Ranko can't get rid of me straight away, then we'll bring him to the line, I'll have him, like, you tactically, you could think, oh, maybe we'll just outfox him and go, go for a little attack here or something, but it makes sense just to, you know, trust what you're good at, um, and here comes people Ganner, again, not res responding to accelerations, just riding at his ridiculous threshold up this climb, it's good, good for work for him, to be fair, it's just good endurance miles for him, obviously, the Good tempo up this whole climb for people Ganner, and I think he's going to absolutely smash the. And well, I hope he goes to Mexico and does the individual pursuit. Unfortunately, there's no individual pursuit in the Olympics, but uh, he's going to do well. Anyway, one quarter to go. Let's stop uh, talking about anyone else. Uh, we're only you're only here for one video, one reason, and that is a big, big Mick Miguel Flores. Um, again, Remco's on the front. Remco's on the front. It's all looking, it's all looking pretty good for Remco. If you didn't know about Big Mick, but Big Mick. It's not very big. He's not like Miguel Andy around, but he's still big, big for me. Uh, it starts to go up a little bit. It starts to get a little bit steeper. Like this looks like quite a nice climb, really. But then at the same time, you just remember it's a bit of a motorway. Like it's not. There's no hairpins. You don't really get that good views from because it's sort of like you're not getting to the peak. You just it's more like a valley road that goes up the side of a climb. If you know what I mean. Obviously, that sounds a bit a bit of an oxymoron. A valley road up a climb, but um. But yeah, we could, we're approaching, we're going towards the end. I don't know why I left all this footage in, but it is, it is what it is. Uh, and people Ganner is coming back. And I thought people Ganner, well, watching it live, could have had it. He could have had it because he, he is the biggest lad by a long way. He's wearing aero socks, which is the commitment to the aero gains that we love to see. Um, and I'd love to see more people have commitment to the aero gains, especially you as you crit riders. I don't know why they don't have the aero socks, but anyway. Uh, but Miguel, Ang Miguel Flores does not need any aero socks. He just needs absolutely mad hematocrit. Mad Watts per kilo and being born at like 2,600 meters, and then that generally sorts you out. And here he comes. You can see he's just biding his time, biding his time, and then he just goes, You know what? I'm gonna launch it. And he goes, and Remco's like, Nah, nothing there. And everyone else is like, Nah, nah, nothing there either. And he just absolutely flies. He did about 540 watts for the last 35 seconds, which at 57 kilos is about. Getting up to nine and a half watts per kilo, um, which is uh, you know close to ten watts per kilo for the boy, and um, yeah, he's flying, he's going like fifty k an hour. It's um, a tremendous win for the man. He's he's loving the crowds. He's abusing everyone, saying, "Oh, he's celebrate!" And then here we go with the customary confetti across the roads. So anyway, I think he's going to be an absolute legend in this coming year. Watch out for Miguel Flores. I'm um, sorry, the video is actually really, really not that interesting. But to be fair, I just need to put across all my points. Because uh, they didn't really, there wasn't really much going on on the stage. And this is the finish. It's like, wow, we're on a plateau. It's not really as picturesque as you get in most man top finishes. But anyway, here we go. Here's the end. Nice little, nice little highlights. But anyway, cheers for watching. I'll see you next time.